Hello, my name is Paul Miners. Welcome back to another one of my productivity training videos. In this video, I want to talk about one of my favorite productivity apps, an app that I've talked about on this channel multiple times that I use on a daily basis, probably, I'm gonna say hundreds of times a day, maybe, is Text Expander. Now, Text Expander, if you haven't heard of this app before, is an app for PC and Mac that helps you store text. Think about something like an email template, which you can easily retrieve using a snippet. So you type a snippet, think of it as like a little abbreviation. You type that on your keyboard when you're writing an email and Text Expander expands the snippet into this big template or pre-written block of text that you have specified. If you've never used Text Expander before, I will link above uh, a link to my getting started video. A lot of people see the potential with an app like Text Expander, but don't really know where to get started. Now in this video, I want to show you some examples of how I use Text Expander to better communicate with customers from a sales and customer service perspective. Now I use Text Expander for all sorts of things, not just email, although that probably is my primary use of Text Expander, but I also store things like affiliate links, Calendly booking links, and links to my website in here. I've got some random uh, dates and file name formats, some uh, website tracking and, and uh, HTML code and things that I use. And I've organized all of my snippets into these various folders. A quick tip on naming conventions. You can see here, I usually name my snippet with some kind of kind of grouping or uh, descriptor of what the email template is about. So these ones here with the client dash are generally email snippets or templates that I use for communicating with clients. I have some customer dash ones. So these are for communicating with customers, some related to follow up. And then I have a bunch down here related to sales. And so that little naming convention really helps me to group the different templates into different types of uh, email template that I'm using. Now, one of the templates I use almost on a daily basis is this uh, sales template. So when I'm talking to somebody about my master Asana program, I usually follow up with this email where I will summarize what's included in the program. You'll see here, there's a fair bit going on in this template. And I wanna use this as an example to show you some of the different features that I take advantage of in Text Expander. So I start my email with a, uh, an, a text block where I can type in the person's name and then I fill in the subject line. And then one of the really cool things about Text Expander is I can have it uh, emulate keystrokes. So I actually, after having Text Expander fill in the subject of my email, it tabs five times to then get the cursor key into the body of the email. So I can actually have Text Expander fill in the subject and then the main body. And I'll show you that in a sec. I then reuse the same name field when I say hi, you know, hi name. And then I have um, uh, an initial bit of information about, you know, a summary of our call. Now I use a couple of optional, um, optional drop down menus to personalize the email. So I have this timing section here where I say, you know, it's uh, my big takeaway is you're brand new to Asana. You've been using Asana for a little while or you've been using Asana for a few years. So that's a little pop up that I can fill in. And then I can say the main reason for reaching out is to set up and onboard your team correctly, audit your account, or uh, you know see how we can improve. So these are a couple of drop down menus that I use to personalize the content. Down here, you can see this options end optional. This is where I can include an optional sentence that I can uh, I can turn on or off using a, uh, a tick box. I have another one here if I want to include a special offer. I have another optional section here. And, and then finally, a few more optional bits of content down the bottom. So this is quite a, quite a detailed email, but it's still fairly customizable. So let me show you an example of this snippet in action. So I'm gonna start my cursor in the subject field, and then I type the abbreviation, which is master uh, sorry, semicolon master Asana, and you can see the text expander window appears. I can then fill in the person's name. So let's just say Jane. Uh, I can pick from my drop down menus. So you're brand new to Asana and you'd want to set it up and onboard your team correctly from day one. Maybe I want to turn off this sentence. I've had these optional sections here. Maybe I'll, I'll include my special offer. And then I'm gonna uh, um, change the different sentences that I wanna turn on or off down here. Maybe I want to include my affiliate link at the end. So all the green sections here are gonna be included. The red will be ignored. So if I click the okay button here, let's watch what happens. 
there we go. So you can see my email has been filled in, including the subject and the main body. All of the personalized options, the drop down options that I applied have all been uh, pasted into this email and I'm ready to go. So you can see that really detailed, but yet still quite personal email has been filled in super quickly. Text Expander is really useful, especially for sales teams. If you have a team of people and you want everyone to be using the same email scripts, you can store them all in Text Expander. It doesn't matter if they're sending the email from a CRM, from their Outlook, from their Gmail. Text Expander works everywhere. And if you want to make a change to any of those scripts, you can make a change in your account and all your salespeople get that change uh, without them even necessarily knowing that the email has changed. Now, after I have sent my initial kind of follow-up email, I've sent here's details of my, my program, the thing that I'm selling, uh, I'll often need to do some follow-ups. Now, instead of having one snippet for every single follow-up email or template, I've actually done something a little bit different here, where I've set up each of my follow-ups as an optional section. So I, what you're looking at here is actually a bunch of different templates that I can use for following up. So I have this intro follow-up, which is asking people if they haven't booked an intro call with me, it's reminding them where to book. I've got here my first follow-up, uh, following up on the, the program. I have uh, uh, sending people a bonjour video. I've got, um, I've tried calling you, uh, follow-up number three, going cold, final follow-up. So I have a bunch of different scripts in here, depending on what it is that I wanna say. So let's say now I've already sent my, my first email. Now I want to reply and follow up. I'm gonna reply to this email. I'll type my abbreviation, which I start with a semicolon, and then I'll do SFUP for sales follow-up. And then I can pick one of these different follow-up templates based on what I think is most appropriate. So this is my first follow-up, so I'm gonna use this one. I'll fill in the person's name. I can choose a drop-down to, to change the service that I'm following up about. And I have a couple of optional fill-ins if I want to say, on our initial call, you said your main problem is getting your team to, to use Asana. And my program will solve this by helping them understand the benefits. And I can change that link if I need to as well. And I'll hit return and you can see my uh, template gets spat out into the email. But I have a bunch of different ones in here. So if I do that again, I've also got a really handy, um, let's move that. I've got a really handy um, final follow-up that I send. If I, if I followed up a few times, I want to sort of send one more. You know, this is my last time following up. I use that sometimes. And so I really like this snippet because instead of having to remember loads of different snippets and what do I want to say, I can use the one snippet, but I can turn on the email that I want to use based on what I think is most appropriate. So those are a couple of the sales scripts and email templates that I use, but I also use Text Expander for a lot of my follow-ups with the active customers and clients that we're working with now. For example, similar to how I have this follow-up on sales, uh, I have this customer follow-up one as well. So after I've started working with a customer, there's a bunch of follow-ups I might want to use, checking in, seeing how they're doing, reminding them of what to do next. So if I bring up an email compose window, just like I could before, I might start my cursor in the subject field. And if I type semicolon C for up, so C for client and then follow up, I can then turn on one uh, of these various email templates. So again, I might just say, hi, Paul. I might change these links here. And then I'm gonna spit out that template. So hi, Paul. Hope you're having a good week, checking in to see how you're doing so far. Here's uh, the link to register for my call and, and that kind of thing. So again, I use these snippets on a daily basis for checking in with clients, remind, reminding them what they need to do next, that kind of thing. Another snippet that I use all the time is this really simple one here. So I have responded with a video and then it pastes the contents of my clipboard. So this is really handy because I use an app called CleanShot X to record my screen. And sometimes I'll, I'll send that video to a customer. So if I have a link to the video on my clipboard, I can do something like this where I can just say semicolon responded. And you see here, I have responded with a video and the contents of my clipboard, which is the link to the video, gets spat out into the email. So I really like that one because sometimes I wanna follow up in a more personal or just kind of more useful way and I really like sending people videos and Text Expander makes this really quick and easy to do. Here's another useful one I use a lot, which is if I want to send a client 
the video recording from a Zoom call that we've had. I have this client recording snippet. And what I'm doing here is actually using, uh, I've, I'm filling in their name, but I'm putting in the date of the recording, which is just today's date. So here I'm utilizing these date options. So it's gonna fill in the current year, dash the current month, dash the current day. So they, so it's clearly putting in the subject, the date of the recording. I then have, here's a link to the recording of our call and I'm inserting the uh, contents of my clipboard. So I'll usually copy a link to the video replay before I use this snippet. So let's have a quick look at that in action. I'll say recording and I'll say, hi, Paul. And let's watch what happens. Hi, Paul, here's a link to the recording of our call. There's the link to where they can download the video. And you can see my subject has been populated here with today's date, 22, 11, 28. And so again, really quick and easy way to just easily share the recording. Clients love it and Text Expander is saving me loads of time. So there we go. I know getting started with Text Expander can be a bit tricky if you're not sure what to use it for, but if you work in sort of customer service or sales like I do, hopefully those examples will help you. I find with Text Expander, it's one of those tools where if you just start using it for a couple of the simple email templates that you use on a daily basis, you will very quickly find lots and lots of use cases for this tool. If you have any questions about Text Expander, feel free to leave me a comment below. Thank you very much for watching, and I'll see you in the next video.